In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about hiding bodies. Poorly? Poorly hiding bodies? Twisting the knife in. Stars on your face. And, oh, hey, look, there's Eric. In our discussion of Teen Killers Club by Lily Sparks. Ah, stars. everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire, and today we're going to discuss Teen Killers Club by Lily Sparks. <laughs> Standard disclaimer, if you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read or listened and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read or listen to the book. Then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. I'm trying not to be predictable in my response, but I can't help it. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't not just go ee woo. And that was the nice spoiler alert. Let's go into the show. <laughs> so boring. Oh. It's just not us. Uh uh-uh. No, no, no. That was a nice sad track. Give me some background info. <laughs> okay, well, so the background info that I pulled, um, she. Actually, spoiler alert, tells us this information in the bonus episode. So go and listen to the bonus episode, everyone, um, instead of me telling you this information so you can hear it, you know, straight from the author's mouth. But I will also say, slight background info, is that Kendara Blake told us about this one. So, like, we kind of had to read it. And then... We get an email from Lily Sparks, and she's like, uh, hey, do this. And we're like, okay. (laughs) Wow, we're so difficult to persuade. I know, right? Uh, So for sure, everyone, go and listen to the bonus episode with Lily Sparks, because it was fun. And, you know, she's brand new to Fictional Hangover, and, you know, now we're not ever going to let her go, so... The claws are in. <laughs> Shrug. She's stuck. She's stuck with us forever. <laughs> but we do it with a smile. We do. We really, really do. Look, I know that it's kind of weird that we hyper fixate on people and force them to join our families, but like we're nice. We're good. It's it's, it's, it's fine. not like we're creepy families i know you know what it's not like we're in the middle of a swamp somewhere i know we don't have banjos we don't have banjos i have several ukuleles does that count no see fine we're not (laughs) creepy weirdos no we're not it's fine and now we have stop saying we're creepy weirdos (laughs) but now we have a new family member and Just have to deal with it. Just have to deal with it. I feel like my background info, my second version of background info, aside from what I was going to say, but then she said it in our bonus episode, um, is also, like, here because of Kendara Blake. And also, how can you not want to read this one just based on the title alone? Exactly. 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 And then when you do turn the book over, you read the summary, or, you know, scroll down online, and you read the summary and go, heck, this is right up fictional hangover straight. Yeah, it really, really is. But you've got to say it in that really awkward way. Heck! Heck! Heck far! This book's just written just for us! Gosh darn! I don't know why we had to say it like that, but whatever. (laughs) Funsies. I don't know. (laughs) Purely for funsies. Do it for the rolls. That's why we're here. (laughs) Are we diving in? Are you ready? I was ready as I'll ever be. Standard response. (laughs) Signal Deer, the girl from hell, is on a prison transport, which is just like the bus to high school. Terrible. Oh. 
A warden loads another prisoner on, a girl in a ski mask called Nobody, and says she'll stick her in the back with the other Class A so they can be together. The rest of the prisoners freak out about having two Class A's on the bus. But what are they going to do besides cower in fear? Class A's are the worst. They're sociopaths, they're psychopaths, they're murderers, and they're proud of it. The warden rips off nobody's ski mask and signal glares at the girls that turn around to gawk at her, and unlike in high school, they shrink away instead of laughing. At least she's got that going for her. (laughs) I need to know who you were on the bus. (laughs) Look, I was sitting in the front row just ready to get off as fast as I could. We didn't have a school bus, but we did. But then somebody set fire to it, so they stopped it. Any, yeah, I'd never got a school bus. I live too close. Anywho, when the regular Gen Pop girls are dropped off, nobody breaks free of her cuffs and rushes the driver, stabbing him in the neck with a paperclip. Nobody gets tasered, but Dave, a warden, sends the driver and the other warden off the bus and keeps going to signal at nobody's destination. A summer camp? Ooh. <laughs> Funsies. When Signal met Dave before the bus ride, he told her he was taking her to a new place for young class A's since they're so dangerous they don't even get the option to appeal anymore. <gasps> even though Signal tells Dave she's innocent, he doesn't believe she didn't decapitate her best friend Rose. Aww. Aww. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And thus, Amanda is hooked. (laughs) Signal remembers a time when she and Rose kind of stopped being best friends. Was it when she lost her head? I mean, it had to stop then. It didn't kind of stop. It's going to put a crimp in the relationship. It had to stop. (laughs) Rose's mom, Janine had been raising Rose on her own for years in the trailer next door to Signal. But then she got a rich husband who moved them to a nice neighborhood and they started going to church. Rose told Signal that she would be able to spend the night in their new house all the time, but that didn't really happen. Rose made new church friends, got a boyfriend, and started ignoring Signal. She started saying, A new guy in secret, though, known only as Mr. Moody. And then she started calling Signal again. The bus arrives at Camp Naramake, and Signal is surprised when it really is a sub-camp. No gun towers, no razor wire, not even any walls. Dave introduces Signal and nobody to Kate the only other adult there, who takes them over to meet the rest of the Class A campers, who are... colouring. Oh. Oh, okay. Signal and Nobody learn names and some kill counts. Dennis, the nerd, has killed zero people. Kurt and Troy, the horny twins, have killed three each. Jada, the only other girl, doesn't disclose her kill count, but threatens Signal to keep away from Eric, who is currently up a tree, or else... Javier, the final camper, is working on the kitchen. Suddenly, an air horn sounds and everybody takes off running. Signal and Nobody join right in and run with everyone else. The air horn means that they have to gather as fast as they can for an activity. It sounds really fun! Except that this activity is... Dismembering and hiding corpses? (gasps) <gasps> fun <laughs> yay <laughs> okay look they're not real corpses they're just mannequins or science lab donations the body reserved for signal kind of looks like rose and unlike anyone else's it's made of silicone and is full of fake blood i want that one i know give me that one The motto of the camp is to not get caught, so the teens have to hide their bodies without a trace. Signal fails spectacularly, and 
<laughs> freaks out. But, like, she cannot do that. She can't freak out. No one at camp can think that she's weak. Javier offers to trade bodies with her, but Dave catches on and makes them switch back. The last one to finish, Signal wraps up fake Rose and gently tosses her into the lake. <laughs> it's so kind. It is. It's like a kindness. Yes. <laughs> After dinner, Kate takes Signal and Nobody to gather clothes, bedding and other supplies and makes Jada show them to the girls' cabin, where she threatens Signal again about liking Eric, who, after Nobody and Jada leave, is standing right behind her, apparently having climbed in through the window. <laughs> Creepy! <laughs> Eric recognises Signal as the girl from hell and reveals his kill count. Ten. Oh. He asks hers. She says 11. But he knows she's lying immediately <laughs> and that she's actually innocent. That's all she's ever wanted to hear. But does she want to hear from a killer? <laughs> I don't know. I'd kind of be worried, I think. <laughs> Not coming across as very threatening. <laughs> Nobody comes back to check on Signal then and pretends to be her girlfriend because obviously... Eric is putting out big creep vibes. Yeah. <laughs> then Kate and Dave come in and insert trackers in their necks. If they leave camp or cut the trackers out, they'll die instantly. Oh, and Kate and Dave have fobs and can also kill them immediately. Just, you know, if they want to. Uh, yikes. <laughs> Imagine being really bored and just being like, I'm going to press the button. Mm. That's terrible. After their kill switches are embedded, Signal and Nobody join the rest of the campers around a campfire, where they have s'mores. <gasps> After some bullying from Jada about Signal not telling anyone her kill number, Nobody swoops in to save her again by telling everyone Signal has killed one person. Cue laughter. <laughs> <laughs> by decapitation. Stunned silence. Oh. Signal doesn't want any of these killers' approval, though, which may be Javier notices, because he says that camp, even though they're learning better ways to kill and hide bodies, can maybe be a chance to do some good for once. Hmm. That's very optimistic. It is. That's half full. Yeah. Way to go, Javier. Knife half in. <laughs> The next day starts bright and early with a run on the ridiculously difficult obstacle course. Signal is very bad at it and comes in last place. The next time she runs, because they have to do it multiple times, Javier catches her when she nearly falls off a fake apartment building she's supposed to be free climbing. Eric tackles her when she's back on the ground and calls her a weakling. And even though he's so swoony to look at, it's not okay. Stop it, Eric. Not okay. Such a creep. Signal passes out from exhaustion and wakes up when Dave tells her that she has to run laps instead of running the obstacle course again and makes Jada watch her. When they're out of view, Jada cuts Signal's face with an arrowhead, telling her, be a slut, get cut. Damn. Damn, Jada! I love that. I know! Oh my god, you hit her. Swoon. <laughs> Eric comes to Signal's rescue this time and manipulates the hell out of Jada and makes her break down into a rocking, sobbing mess. <gasps> Signal runs off to eat lunch with everyone else, but that's interrupted by Dave slamming a sloppy, wet trash bag in front of her. She failed her test of corpse hiding and is forced to try again. And Javier helps, even though he's not supposed to. They head to a faraway clearing in the woods to where the campers keep a burn barrel and begin loading body parts in. As the fire burns, Signal sits and loops dandelions into a crown, which Javier is mesmerized by. Then she notices he has a tattoo of a little kid, and then they talk about that for a bit, and about dandelions, you know, like whether they're weeds or not. And then Javier places a flower crown onto Signal's head. Aww. 
Eric strolls up right then, making comments about how flirty Signal and Javier are, even though Signal has a girlfriend? Eric then talks about how weak Signal is again, but then he offers to help her figure out who actually killed her best friend since she obviously didn't do it. Then he also realizes that the body they're trying to burn is made of silicone, so uh, it's not going to burn at all. <laughs> Fail number two. This feels like it's like hiding a body 101. No, the material matter. I mean, that's why we're at camp. Exactly. But to be fair, they've just been given a corpse and said, hide the body, not... If it's made of silicon, you need to do this. If evidence is made of this, you need to do right. that. Yeah. Where's not, the education? They're not very good teachers. I'm going to go they're ahead and not. just put that out there. It would fail that Ofsted. <laughs> so they get water from a stream to put out the useless fire and continue talking about Rose and how her boyfriend Mike had an alibi, but it fell through, which Signal didn't know about. Her public defender told her to take a plea deal, even though there was still clear evidence that she was not responsible, and like a fool, she accepted it. And also like a fool, she has now definitely let Eric, the master manipulator, know that she's really innocent, which isn't good for her rep at camp. Mm -mm. He claims he won't do that, and he really wants to help. Mm. <sighs> Do we believe yeah. him, though? Master manipulator. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Well, they go over everything Signal can remember about the night. Oh. Maybe he Except really he does want to help. Do you think he wants to... No, I'm going to save that for the discussion. Save it. Save it for later. Save it. Save it. Rose wanted Signal to meet with her in a shed in the woods, and there was a party going on nearby. Rose told Signal she needed a photo for a school project and that Mr. Moody was coming too, so Signal would finally get to meet him. The next thing she remembers is waking up the next morning. Eric asks about Mr. Moody, and Signal says she had been covering up the secret relationship Rose was having with him, but she knows literally nothing about him at all. All she knows is that Rose asked her to sleep over at her house and cover for her if her mom or stepdad came to check on them. And she did. This first time that they were supposed to meet, Signal can't remember it at all. And then she wakes up with her friend's body and head in her lap. Seems like... Maybe Mr. Moody used Signal, just like Rose, but, you know, for much worse reasons. <laughs> so, who is he? Maybe the local drug dealer, Jaw It's Nikki? Or maybe the killer is Mike, Rose's actual boyfriend? Or maybe Mike and his alibi that fell through, Vaughn, had something to do with it? So many options. But look, whatever it is... It wasn't Signal, okay? <laughs> Dave interrupts this investigation and summons Signal and Eric back to camp for survival training. Then they are free for the evening. Signal and Nobody talk about camp and about the other campers. Nobody seems to like camp just fine and sees deeper inside the other campers than Signal does. She convinces her to look more closely at Jada and determine why she acts the way she does. Same with Eric. As they walk to their cabin, they encounter a figure wearing a dog mask. Nobody chases after the masked man, and Signal manages to stop her just before she crosses the kill switch line. When they get back to camp, Kate seems worried and moves all the girls into the boys' cabin. Mm. Ooh. While there, they all speculate who Dog Mask could be and how he seemed to know about the kill line at the creek. But then somebody farts and everyone explodes into giggles and the serious discussion is over. As she goes to sleep, Signal finds a note under her pillow from Javier who says that a dandelion is a flower for sure, which definitely means that he likes her and thinks that she's a flower and not a weed. Oh, yeah. <gasps> I have thoughts about what's a weed and dandelions, but 
The next morning, Dennis and Zig will get to do other activities instead of the obstacle course because they're so bad at it. <laughs> Kid gives Signal a locked brick and sets Dennis to work at hacking a pacemaker. Dennis's strengths clearly lie in computers, and that's obviously the way he's been trained to kill and not get caught. It turns out Dennis hasn't killed anyone, but he created a creepy website about death and murder and has the ability to pretty much do anything he wants with a computer and thought everyone would be safer if he was locked away. He also says he doesn't believe that Signal is a nice person. After all, she's a class A killer, but really, really, she's not. <laughs> this makes Signal think of her time in court when Rose's mom, Janine, said that she's not fooled by Signal and that she knows that she murdered her daughter. Oh. Kate calls Signal and Dennis back for another activity and sends Signal to the pantry to grab gloves, but while she's there, she finds newspaper clippings hidden under a shelf. And they're about her trial. <gasps> uh, what? Signal hides the newspapers with plans to retrieve them later and joins the rest of the group, where Kate teaches them how to melt corpses with acid. Ooh, practical. I know. She flirts with Javier while the acid works, and he ends up drawing a dandelion tattoo on her arm. This is so gosh darn romantic. I know, it's so sweet. <laughs> Later in their cabin, Signal tells Eric about the newspaper clippings and asks him if he can help her get them. He does, and after everyone else is asleep, they sneak out of the cabin to talk. He pesters her about flirting with Javier and tells her that he's a sociopath. But aren't they all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says yes, everyone but her. They sit and read the papers and learn that sometime after her trial, Mike, Rose's boyfriend, left town. Surely Signal can remember more about that night than if Mike had anything to do with it. So Eric suggests he hypnotise her, but then she kind of does that on her own. I wish I could do that. I know. Ugh. Signal remembers when she finally told Rose she couldn't cover for her anymore. She left Rose's house, but forgot her math book and had to go back for it. When she gets back, she overhears Janine telling Rose how bad of an influence Signal is and that she and Rose's stepdad, Tom, are concerned. Tom's pain pills are disappearing and they found cigarettes. <gasps> Signal isn't responsible for either of those things. The cigarettes actually belong to Janine, and Tom's probably abusing his own medication. <laughs> Janine catches Signal as she's leaving and tells her that she was 16 once, too, and begs her to tell her if Rose is taking drugs. Signal should have told Janine about Mr. Moody, but she didn't. Signal snaps out of the memory when they realise that Kate and Dave are out doing a bed check, which means they need to get to the cabin and quick. They make it back just in time, phew. Signal overhears Kate and Dave talking about keeping them close until they find Dog Mask and that Kate owes him. As Signal drifts off trying to figure out what that means, she also remembers more of from the shed with Rose and that Rose made her drink from a thermos that was filled with something that might be alcohol or something worse. Oh. Ooh. The next day is filled with fun camp activities. <gasps> Dave gives everyone a colorful Sharpie and challenges them to slice each other's throats. Ooh. I want to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> there are two winners. The one that slices the most throats and the one who isn't sliced at all. And they could be the same person. Signal is very flirty with Javier again until she sees Eric and gets her throat slashed. After this activity, Kate draws them to a table where they must complete a scavenger hunt, but it's not really a hunt at all. It's a list of embarrassing secrets about each camper and they have to figure out who's who. The secrets are things like who wet the bed until they were 13, whose first kiss was with their stepbrother, who grew up in a trailer park, and other things like that. Signal fesses up to one that's not hers to save Jada, 
Then the rest of the campers follow suit, which does not go over well with Kate and Dave. <laughs> it gets worse when Signal balls up her paper and tosses it. Then everyone else does, too. Ooh, leadership skills. <sighs> Then it gets even worse when Dave yanks Signal up by her collar when he finds her fake rose corpse again. <sighs> come on, Signal. When he yells at her, the camp motto, what did you come here to learn? Expecting her to respond how not to get caught. And she responds, not to end up like you. <gasps> oh, Ooh. burn. Ooh, harsh burn. Well, that's not good at all. Uh -uh. He gives her one last chance to hide the body. He sends Jada to watch over her again, of course, thinking that Jada still hates her, but it's much better now, what with the scavenger hunt game, and Jada ends up helping her dig a hole to bury the body. They talk and realise that they really don't hate each other, and now they're friends. Yay. Soon enough, Dave calls Jada back, leaving Signal alone. I love how burying a corpse together brings people together. It really does. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. Okay, so Signal is not actually alone, because who's the greatest at sneaking up on her? Eric. Eric comes up soon and helps her finish the hole. Signal fills Eric in on what she remembers from the shed. Rose made her drink from the thermos while she set up some sort of weird ritual involving candles, cakes, music, and a saw. Ooh, a cult. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Eric then talks about how he read in a clipping that Rose was supposed to get a lot of money when she turned 18 from a family trust, so maybe Mr. Moody was somehow trying to kill Rose to get that? Signal really thinks it's Vaughn, Mike's best friend and alibi, and that they were in a secret love triangle and, you know, then they found out about it, but Eric really doesn't think so. He thinks it's Jaw, the drug dealer, or maybe it was actually Signal? Ooh. She gets pissed and then comes at him and his manipulation again, but he tries to explain that he really is trying to help her, and also that Javier is a bad guy. She's like, whatever. She doesn't want to judge anyone by their past. And then they go back to the cabin. Signal remembers more about the night in the shed when she goes to sleep, and it turns into a nightmare involving mist and smoke and screaming and faceless people, and Rose maybe making out with someone with blonde hair and then setting Signal up for a fake kissing photograph. She wakes everyone up with her screaming, then they decide to have a sleepover in the, on the floor of the cabin. They decide that they're going to try to keep each other safe after Signal's outburst at Dave, but then dog mask shows up. No. They all attack and nobody kills him. But as he's dying, he says, We won't go quiet. Deal with the devil. It's all it's ever been. Tell Kate. Won't go quiet. <laughs> Kate and Dave rush in then. <laughs> Kate looking startled. Dave says it looks like they need to report an intruder to HQ. When the teen killers start to question him, he dismisses them to clean up the body. Signal goes to get cleaning supplies and overhears Kate telling Dave that they can't tell HQ who Dog Mask was because then they'll send the teen killers out early and they're not ready. Javier comes to find Signal and asks her if she likes him, even though nobody is her girlfriend. Which is her response. Nobody is my girlfriend. Nobody. Jada interrupts, and they gather their supplies. But as they head back toward the cabin, Signal tells Javier that she does like him. And then they kiss. <laughs> back at the cabin, the group gets Dog Mask wrapped up in trash bags and team lift him down to the lake, then roll him out to the middle and dump him in. Signal tells everyone that she overheard with Dave and Kate about the headquarters. Then they talk about how Dog Mask must have known about the kill switches since she tried to lure nobody away and decide that maybe he was a counsellor with Dave and Kate. 
talk then changes to what they're going to do when they are retired from the Teen Killers Club, which some of them didn't even know about. Some thought they would be retired after 10 years, some thought 15, and then they realise that the only way they'll be retired is when they get killed on a mission and don't get back. Mm. None of this is good. Mm -mm. One good thing does come of the body dump trip. Nobody amicably breaks up with Signal. So now she's free to date Javier. Or is it Eric? Mm. That's what nobody thinks, at least. As they head back to the cabin, there's an explosion. <laughs> Damn! Kate lets the group know that they are to stay out of all cabins until they are swept for incendiary devices, which were left by Dog Mask. The campers are made to gather materials and will sleep out in the middle of a field. Javier kisses Signal there in front of everyone, which is a little awkward, but it's okay. Everyone is excited about it? Well, except for nobody, because she thinks that Signal likes Eric, and uh, Eric, who uh, also thought that. <laughs> and, Rather big-headed of you, Eric. Uh, but also us, too, because, come on, it's a love drive. In the middle of the night, Eric comes over to Signal and tells her that he overheard Dave and Kate say that the kill switches have been turned off in case they needed to flee camp because of the bombs. He takes her to a little house not far away where they break in and use the internet to find some resources to solve Rose's murder. On the way, they talk about Eric and his likes and dislikes, but then they break into the house. Nice. It's a good conversation to have between friends, and then you break into a house. Everybody's going to have a hobby. <laughs> they see a video on social media of Mike publicly coming out with Vaughn as his boyfriend. Oh my gosh. Well, that definitely makes the love triangle angle a little bit skewed. Yeah. Eric then tells Signal about a website where amateur sleuths try to solve crimes, and Rose's crime is one of them. One of the theories put forth on this site is about Rose being killed in a ritual sacrifice, which makes all that weird stuff found in the shed make a little more sense. They also mention that Janine said she found Signal's pentagram necklace, which would also make sense with the sacrifice, but... Signal has never owned a pentagram necklace. The only person on any of the posts that stands up for Signal is Jaw It's Nikki, who says she's not so bad and asks if she really could be the killer? Like, really? Signal learns that he lives in Southern California now, which means he also left town after the murder. Is it him? Is he the real killer? Eric declares that he's going to clear Signal's name and get her out of the camp. <laughs> Speaking of camp, when they get back, there's a helicopter overhead. The director of the camp has arrived, and he's not a nice guy. One of the twins, Troy, yells at him when he kicks his sleeping bag, and so the director clicks his kill switch without hesitation. Shit. What? Shit, man. Damn. <laughs> Things go quickly after this. The director breaks the teen killers into pairs and gives them assignments of people that they are going to be sent out to kill. He says if they make any mistakes or deviate from the plans provided, he'll set off their kill switches. Bloody hell. Yikes. So much yikes. Nobody and Javier are given an assignment that will take them near the town in Southern California where Joel lives and then Signal realises she immediately offers to trade. That doesn't go well with the director, but he allows it. Mm. Signal and Javier's target is called Angel Childs. He's a cult leader who targets people between the ages of 18 and 24. Most of them female. Um, yeesh. Javier gets mad at Signal for being out overnight with Eric and for taking nobody's place on the mission, which he believes is definitely one that they're not going to come back from. Signal tells him the truth about why she wants to go to Southern California, which includes telling him that she's innocent. He kind of seems to not like her anymore after that. 
claiming that he's definitely not innocent. <laughs> it's a club of killers. It really it's is. It's not going to be... Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 As they all make what little preparations are allowed before leaving on their missions, Dennis reveals that he found information in Kate's cabin about previous campers and their missions. Wait. Previous campers? Weren't they all told that this is a new program? <laughs> nope, it is not. It is not. It's been going on for years. That was a lie. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> And the majority of the campers who were sent out on missions were killed in action. Damn. Signal has an idea then. She remembers how the kill switches were turned off after the explosions, and about how, if they make any mistakes while they're out on their missions, the director will kill them. Does that mean that the kill switches can be turned off remotely? Isn't that something that Dennis, who can shut down someone's pacemaker just using a computer, would be able to do? Signal pulls Dennis aside and asks him to find a way to shut off her kill switch so she can go find the person who actually killed her best friend. He says he'll try and unless he contacts her to tell her otherwise, he should have it done in a few days. Ooh. Ooh. As they get ready for bed that night, Signal overhears Javier telling the director that she's useless. Actually, she's worse than useless. Well, that's just not something that you want to hear from a guy that you thought you liked a whole lot. <laughs> Javier tells the director that he's got contacts with a gang that's near the cult and can definitely get in and get out without Signal going in and messing everything up. Sheesh. <laughs> the director isn't really having it, though, and tells Javier that he's still sending them both in and, you know, we'll just see who comes out in the end. Yikes. Later, Signal confronts Javier, who says that he just said all that stuff to try to keep her safe. Mm -hmm. Hmm. He also says he's not a good guy. He killed someone with his bare hands. Hmm. So you're telling me that you're strong. Mm. Hmm. Mm. The team split up and go find their targets to kill. The road trip for Signal and Javier is almost normal, and they decide that they're not broken up, that they're going to have a clean slate. Though Signal was oddly obsessed with trying to say goodbye to Eric. Yeah. They stop for the night at a hotel, and just when you think it's going to get sexy between them, Javier trains Signal to fight. <sighs> he grabs her by the neck at one point, and she flips out thinking he's going to strangle or something. And then he says he thought it was starting clean. Well, no. Signal can't move on from Javier actually killing someone without hearing him tell the story of what happened, which he really doesn't want to do. But he does anyway. <sighs> Javier had a little brother, Mateo, and a best friend, Ricky. Ricky's brother was a member of a gang, and Ricky wanted to join too, so he started wearing a bandana, which represented the gang. One day, Ricky, Javier, and Mateo go out to a shop, and on the way, someone from a rival gang drives by and tries to shoot Ricky. But they miss and kill Mateo instead. The cops won't do anything. The gang members won't do anything. No one will do anything about this senseless violence. A little bit later, Javier's at a party and he sees the shooter there. He ends up punching the guy's head in. Literally smashes his skull with his fists. Now he's a murderer and in the Teen Killers Club. Damn it. Face smash. Can't feel sorry for the guy though. No, but face smash. That is intense. He's strong. Yeah. The next day is the day they are to sneak into the cult. It's also the day that Dennis told Signal he should have her kill switch deactivated, and she hasn't heard from him, so she decides to test it. While Javier meets with his gang contact, who is going to escort them to the cult, Signal says she's going to the store. 
Before she leaves, she tells Javier that being his girlfriend is the best thing that's ever happened to her. You know, just in case she's about to drive off and be kill switched. <laughs> she drives away, actually towards the place where Joe lives, fearing the moment when she passes outside the kill switch range. Nothing happens. Dennis did it. Yay! Oh my god, he did it. Signal makes her way all the way to Joe's place. Be a very short book if, if, if it didn't. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> and now she's dead. Womp womp. <laughs> when she gets there, Signal uses her obstacle course muscles and her newly learned ability to not get caught and sneaks into Jaw's house. When she's searching his room, she hears someone else come in. Oh, shit. Jaw's gonna find her. Oh, wait. That's not Jaw. That's... Eric? Because of course Eric sneaks in. <laughs> because of course he does. That's what he does best. Eric tells Signal that his target was oddly easy to take down, and in fact, they killed themselves right in front of him and Jada. So Kate and Dave let them have a little time off without the kill switches engaged before coming back to camp. He took the opportunity to come search Jaws' place for evidence. They end up finding pentagrams all over his room, and then they find the thermos and the necklace that Janine said was signals. So Jaw did it. He's the killer. Right? <laughs> no. No. Eric says Jaw can't be responsible. He's a peaceful pothead. <laughs> There's no way he could be a killer. <laughs> He forces Signal to think of exactly what happened in the shed and of all the memories she's been reliving. He convinces her that whoever killed Rose had no idea that Signal was going to be there that night and frames her by cleaning up everything from the crime scene. He tells her that Rose was trying to stage a photo of Signal and Jaw kissing to hide the fact that Rose was doing the town drug dealer. <laughs> but then the killer came in and saw them together paid Jaw off to get out of town, killed Rose, frame signal. Who could do such a thing? I don't know. That's a lot. Mm, let's check our list of suspects. Before that's revealed, they hear Jaw get home and sneak back out of his house. They run to Signal's car, and then Eric reveals that he knows Signal's kill switches off because Dennis told him. <laughs> He asks if she's going to go and help Javier kill their target, or if she's just going to ride off into the sunset, which leads to them arguing all during the drive back to the hotel about Javier being a good person, even though he's a killer who's about to kill again. Signal says he's good because he doesn't want her to have to kill anyone, but Eric just makes her think that Javier thinks she's pathetic, and then they're fighting more, but then they start kissing. And Javier is standing right outside the car looking at them. Ooh. Mm. Javier is on the phone with the director and has been lying to him saying that Signal was asleep Signal takes the phone and the director tells her he found out about Dennis turning off her switch and then killed him <gasps> and now if she steps even a little bit out of line she's dead Damn. she relays this info to Eric and Javier but Eric refuses to believe that Dennis is dead and leaves to find out for himself. Signal then tries to explain to Javier that she never thought she was going to see Eric again. That's why they were kissing. But he's like, no. <laughs> uh-uh. Stop, Stop it. it. Then they leave for the cult. When they arrive, the brainwashed cult girls take Javier, his gang friend, and Signal to a huge barn where they all have to sit at a huge table waiting on Angel to get there so they can eat. Everything is really weird and cultish, and then, <laughs> soon enough, Angel has latched on to Signal. They decided before arriving that Signal had to get Angel alone long enough for Javier to sneak in and kill him. Well, it looks like that's going to happen real soon. Angel makes several of his followers take Signal to prepare her for their time together and escort Javier to his own private quarters. The girls bathe Signal and put her in a vintage wedding dress and tell her they're going to stay there, holding her hand, while Angel essentially has his way with her. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Thank you. No. 
She tells them that she wants to be alone with the angel, and he allows it. But then, when they're alone, he tells her he knows who she is and what she's doing. Then asks her how Kate and Dave are doing. <gasps> Wait, what? what? Uh, oh, yeah. Angel, he's a retired teen killer. What? So are the other targets that the rest were sent out to kill. So was Dog Mask. So are Dave and Kate. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Put the Turn knife the in. Turn it. <laughs> Angel explains that they were all teen killers together at camp and that some of them died on their jobs and some were retired and allowed to do their own thing and that Dave and Kate stayed behind at camp to train the next group. He also talks about Signal's case and how he's sure that Dave didn't like her very much at camp because, oh yeah, he's Rose's birth father. What? Twist! Another twist of the knife. <clears throat> and her mother, Janine, was also a teen killer. <gasps> what? Oh, and you know. Right in there. You know, you know what else? Yeah. She was actually the one who killed Rose. <laughs> what? <laughs> Angel says she really wasn't the maternal type. <gasps> Damn it! What? Oh, <laughs> so many twists. Damn. So good. <laughs> Damn. While this crazy bonkers story is being told <laughs> signal notices that the barn is on fire Damn. because of course because of course it is she's worried because javier was supposed to come help her after she got angel alone for a while but he hasn't shown up angel tells her he's not coming and that he's probably dead Damn. then he offers signal the opportunity to try to kill him on her own but she fails <gasps> Luckily, Eric arrives then, and so does Javier. They take down Angel, and then they grab Signal. Of course Eric turns up. Oh, Eric's Eric. everywhere. He is. He's everywhere you want to be. <laughs> Signal flips out again, just like before when she was afraid that Javier was going to kill her in the hotel. It seems like that might actually be what's about to happen. But then Eric cuts out her kill switch instead. Javier gets Signal out of the barn, but before Eric can follow, the barn collapses. Javier takes Signal back to their hotel, then talks to the director and tells him that both Signal and Eric are dead, and that he'll do a full debriefing when he gets back to camp. Javier explains to Signal what happened after Eric left them before they went to the cult. Like Eric said, he knew that Dennis was still alive, and he was right. Dennis told him that the director realised the switches were off and sent Jada and Kurt to retrieve Dennis and nobody, or else he'd kill them. Eric had enough time to cut out his own switch after hearing from Dennis, and then he came to the cult to get the signal switch out too. Well, he did do that much. He did it. He said he was gonna, and he did it. He did do do that much, at least. He yes. did. He did. And then he died in a fire. <sighs> the next day, Javier takes Signal to the bus station before heading back to camp. He tells Signal to go as far away as she can because, you know, they might get him to talk and he might slip up and reveal that she's still alive. Signal almost refuses, but then she gets on a bus. She wants to figure out a way to break Javier, Dennis, Nobody, Jada, and Kurt out of camp. But how is she going to do that? As she waits for the bus to pull away, Eric sits down next to her. Of course. Because of course he does. <laughs> Together now, and free, surely they'll be able to set their friends free too. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Whoa, a huge cliffhanger. Oh my god. God damn it. 
<laughs> yeah. <I> was... <sighs> oh, man. So many. Just, just take the knife in and just keep twisting it. Just Completely. Keep, just keep twisting it over and over and over again. And then take it out. And then stab it back in. And then and twist, do it twist, again. Twist, twist, yeah. twist. Oh. Just twist. Oh. Twist, twist, twist. Stop. Damn. Do you know what? I think whilst our lovely listeners get the... Um, are supposed to get an advert for another podcast, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Eric turns up during it. He might. He, You know, you turn around because he's probably back there. He's probably he right there. Oh, he is the advert. It's like, hi, I'm Eric. I'm a member of the Teen Killers Club. <laughs> I've killed a minimum of ten people. Ask me how. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that. That would be hilarious. But no, it's prob- It's just. It's just gonna be. It's just gonna be a promo for another show. Sorry, sorry, everyone. It's not actually Eric. <laughs> or is it? Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Barbara. And I'm Lauren. We are the hosts of Badass Literature Society, a book review podcast where we take book recommendations from listeners like you, read them, and then discuss them on our show. Join us once a month as we dive into the books you picked and talk about them. And don't miss our bonus episodes covering all sorts of random bookish topics that come out in between reviews. Don't worry, if you want to read one of the books, the first part of each episode is designated spoiler-free, so you can listen and see if you'd like to read it, and then come back and listen to the rest later. You can find Badass Literature Society on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, and anywhere else you like to listen. Now, back to the show. Okay, are we back? Is Eric here? He's back there. I can see you. He's behind you. He could be in your internet history somewhere. He probably is. (laughs) He's lurking around on Dennis's really terrible website right now. What was the name of Dennis's website? I didn't include it in the summary because it was I really, remember. really weird. Some skull sex or something like that. It was weird. It was weird, man. It's weird enough for me not to actively Google it. Yeah, don't. Because then you're going to get marked as a class A and taken to camp. Well, to be fair, given the would you rathers that we post I know. and the images that I end up having to Google to try and find and the combination of words to you to, to use yep. to get these images. I'm surprised I haven't had a phone call. I know. No, man. This was a really good concept for a book. I, you know, when we read the summary after we got sent the email and after Kondara had, had recommended it. Uh-huh. I was like, I'm really excited for it. Yeah. But actually, you know, the execution was was fantastic. I've I, I have an alternative history in my head as well for it. Um but I want to know more. Yeah. Well don't worry about book, the characters. Book two comes out in just a few weeks. Well that's so, it, so you can it's learn unacceptable. More it's soon. unacceptable I have to wait until next month. That's unacceptable. I know. I no disrespect to Signal as a character, but I want nobody's backstory. I want Jada's backstory. I want yeah. Eric's backstory. I want theirs. Like, get, I would love an anthology of yeah. their backstories. Yeah. That would be so fun. Yeah, we need um, we need a short story collection for sure. Yeah, and it's probably because Signal is front and center. It's about her guilt or and innocence. Yeah, that you know, I don't feel like I need. To, I'm not as intrigued because I am being given that information. Yeah. It's everybody else. Yeah. I really want to know about nobody. Really. I really, really do. Because it's Jada for me. Like, we didn't we didn't go into a lot of detail with, with them in the summary, but you find out that nobody she's like she's six feet tall, she's Wearing this ski mask, and she's covered in burn scars all over. But then there's a point while they're at camp, and she takes off her mask, and she's gorgeous underneath. Like, I need to know why. I need to know what happened. I need it. Yeah. Need that story. Yeah. I need it. 
They are extremely intriguing characters. Yes. Need more. Now. <laughs> now, please. Thank you. If we say Eric's name no, I'm sure he'll pop up. He will. I mean, he's so, clearly listening to us. He's the bloody Mary of the Tinkers. <laughs> There's, there were, you're right, there's so many good characters. Like, I don't... I'm pretty sure that nobody is my favorite, which is funny to say. Nobody's my favorite character. <laughs> but, like, but like you said, I really want to know everyone's story. We got Javier's backstory a little bit, and I really yes. liked Javier to uh, see the bonus episode for why I'm so obsessed with Javier. But I also really... I mean, I liked everyone. I felt... I think probably the only ones I don't really care about were the twins, and one of them died anyway. <laughs> I Dave and Kate annoyed the life out of me, and I, it felt very intentional that they were just like, and especially Dave, which is horrible. Like, I, I don't want to know anything more about them because they just seem like horrible people. I don't know. Like, I kind of do. I kind of do want to learn more about them. I, I want to go back in time. Have... Well, yeah, I suppose, actually, if we could go back in time and actually have a Teen Killers Club camp with them, that would be a bit more intriguing. But now I just get this idea that Dave is this... Yeah, you know the whole horrible adage? I don't particularly like it, but the adage of those who do do and those who can't teach. Yeah. That feels like Dave is the epitome of that. Like, he's just so rubbish. And actually, the execution, pardon the pun, (laughs) of being a killer, that he has to teach the obstacle courses and burying the silicon bodies. and It it feels like he's the type of teacher who should never have entered the profession because he can't take even mild disruption and he becomes like hysterical his face goes red yeah. and when he starts getting irritated he's screaming like to the to the point where spittles flying Ugh. everywhere yeah his eyes are bulging and you think he's gonna have a heart attack yeah that's the kind of dave that i got which might be completely different to yours and everybody else's and even the way that lily sparks intended to write it but i just I just got really annoyed by him and having known teachers like that both as a child and professionally, knowing them as trainers, I don't want to know anything more about you because I can't stand you and I just want to walk away. Whereas I feel like Kate might be a little bit more intriguing yeah. and I kind of wonder, and my fanfic for the week is that Dave and Kate were a bit of a Bonnie and Clyde act back in the day. But Dave and Janine were a thing. Ah, but that's where the love triangle comes in. I know, because there's got to be a love triangle. There's got to be a love triangle. It's summer camp. Yeah. <laughs> that's killer camp. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that Janine and Dave have this kid and that Janine got, like, retired from camp. Because she got preggers. You know, like, I, f- I just, I worry about her. Because she got- she's, you know, a murderer. And then she kills her own daughter. She got retired very early then. Because she must have had, she had Rose at like 17, 18. Yeah, I mean, she, they moved her to camp and she got pregnant while she was at camp. So she never got to fulfill her destiny. But then she did because she killed her own daughter. But you don't really want to wait 17 years. I wonder how many people are buried under the patio. I mean, probably a lot. They need to start looking around the town to yeah. see where the missing people and unsolved murders are. Yeah. Well, I just need everyone's story. Everyone's and nobody's. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I... love a terrible pun. I know. Do you know I love a summer camp book, so I really enjoyed all of the camp activities. And do you know what else I really liked? The cult. Oh, I love the cult. It was bonkers as shit. And even Um, though... Even though 
We didn't go into a lot of detail in the summary about it. Like, and the, just the little tiniest, tinily tiny bit that we did include was bonkers as shit. Like, it was bonkers times a thousand in the book. Wow. I think the the the, the cult section was one of my favorites. Like, prolonged scenes. Yes. Yeah. It was yeah. so weird. It definitely got Midsummer vibes from it. Mm. Definitely. And I was just expecting a body to get thrown off of a cliff or something. <laughs> Which, you know, to be fair, probably has happened because Angel, the leader of the cult, is also a teen killer. So, <laughs> who knows? Quite likely. Quite likely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the idea that, well, I don't like the idea, but I appreciate the idea that a teen killer who has successfully retired, quote unquote, has turned cult leader. Yeah. It kind of seems to fit the the the, the profile, the oh, sociopathic, for sure. oh, psychopathic for sure. profile. He's like walking around barefoot with a guitar, luring oh, people in. Oh, are doing that. Yeah, and he just lures them in and then... Tells them that they're stars. Oh, it's stars. And you're going to get to heaven. Oh, yeah. And then getting to heaven is AKA being murdered. <laughs> That's such a stereotype kind of cult, though, isn't it, really? It's like he, he he's actually done no homework on the variations you know, of cults. Why mess with a good thing? You know that it's going to work. True. Don't stir the pot. Well, exactly. And. You know, just hype everybody up on drugs. They're fine. They're fine. It's all good. Putting people in a vintage wedding dress so we can have sex with them. That's a kink. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Whilst being held down by somebody else, by other people. Yeah, like, the girls are like, yeah, we can hold your hand. And we're going to be there for you. And we're going to experience it all together. Oh, my God. God. And then they're going to be no. stars in heaven together. Like yes. How about no? Weird. How about need it? You go away. <laughs> Leave. And she's like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm not into that. Like this is my first time at the cult, and I just need to be eased in a little bit, okay? And they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna <laughs> let you do that. I'm gonna paint stars on my face. And I'm going to eat bread. I'm going to grow my vegetables. And I just wanted to see them frolicking around, you know? Need it. I need it. Can we just have a book about the cult? I want to know everything. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I was just waiting for you to be done then. (laughs) No, what? I don't want to be done. I want to be in the sky in heaven. How about no? No. I don't think I would be very good in the cult, you know. No. Mm -mm. I don't do the whole communal thing. I mean, this is based on the fact that it's a communal cult. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to contribute. No. Like, I'll just, like, in real life, I'll just, you know, sit on the edge. I don't want to be in the middle of it. It's far too many people. Yeah, and I feel like everyone smells real bad. I just don't think, it depends on who it is. If it's, I think the men will smell bad. Yeah. But the women will be like, let's go and, like, let's get the hot tub. And then we'll <sighs> run sexual oils everywhere, everybody. Yeah. And then we'll, like, smoke some weed. And it'll be all like, oh, look at the stars. Yeah, let's go bathe each other in the river. Oh my god, I'm gonna wash our hair. Oh my god. Far too much combing of other people's hair. Ooh, yeah. Comb your own hair. Yeah, now you know how we feel about hair brushing on Fictional Hangover. Yeah. And they're all very, like, touchy, feely, clingy. Oh, mm. We're completely a stereotyping here, but this is this is the cult vibes we got from it. Right, we did. Yeah. What else? I loved the scene when nobody kills Dog Mask. Oh my god, nobody's a badass. That was 
the world sit you around spooky stories well not really they the wanted to didn't they but signal was like no let's not do spooky stories let's do sweet and innocent friendly mm-hmm. stories let's yeah. talk about friendship why isn't she part of this freaking cult actually let's talk about <laughs> friendship and love and kindness ah. Oh, no. No, Signal, that's boring. That's boring. I know you've just had a shock, but that's the stop being boring. And it's like, oh, look, there's a killer. Ah! Ah, sit nobody. Stab, stab, stab. Everybody yeah. else, yay! Signal, in the corner. Yeah, but it's everyone brilliant. else is like, woo! Woo, murder! Loved it. Loved it. Do you know, I really... If I could change anything about this book, which is not necessary, because it was so much ridiculous fun i want them to be more murdery is that too much to ask no like because you know javier has this really moving touching story about avenging his little brother you know and you're like oh he shouldn't be in jail like he killed a killer everything's fine and Signal didn't kill anybody, and Dennis, Dennis hasn't killed anybody. And, you know, Jada, it seems like Jada had a really traumatic upbringing as well. And I'm probably pretty sure, you know, there was there was the one um, scavenger hunt thing, and it was, like, really hinted that it was Jada who kissed her stepbrother, and Eric was manipulating her, talking about her stepbrother. Pretty sure that something real bad happened with Jada's stepbrother, and she probably murdered him in self-defense. But, like, I want... I need to know. I need I need more violent killings in my book about murderers. So far, other than probably Eric, I honestly can't remember the twins. Um, apart from Eric, everybody seems to have a quote unquote sensible motivation, yeah, an understandable motivation for the murder, yeah, like it, it seems to be abuse, it seems to be a revenge for the killing of a little brother, and you know there's 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 a reason it's not just an act of passion, it's not yeah. just a random act well, it is an act of passion to a degree, but it's it's not justifiable, but certainly understandable. Yeah. We don't know about Eric and his ten kills. Ten kills, I know. And, like, he, there's a little bit of backstory in there that he, like, his mom was a forensic scientist or something, and his dad also did something like that. And they pulled him out of school when he was, like, in middle school and homeschooled him because they were like, hey, dude, you're a sociopath and your prob's going to murder someone. And... You know, then he did, but like, who did he kill? Who, what, who are the 10 people that he has killed? I like to think that he's killed them for his parents to discover and to solve and find. Yeah. It's like his cry for help to say, Hi, mommy, hi, daddy, will you please pay attention to me now? Yeah. And like also, desperate cries for attention. There's so much stuff about him being a master manipulator. Like, did he actually? kill someone like with his hands or did he just get inside their heads and you know make them he's the true cult leader yeah if there was going to be any of them who i'd have said would have been a cult leader it's not hippy drippy angel because right. like we've like we've just done with some it's a bit of a stereotype um it's... but if it ain't broke don't fix it exactly Exactly. I'm not knocking it at all. I love those scenes. The cult scenes with Angel, I love them. Yeah. But, you know, it's done in a way, for, in that way, in a very, very specific reason. Because if the if Angel was too similar to Eric, there's a possibility that there's going to be basically the same storyline twice. Yeah. And I think Eric would be a very smart cult leader. If he didn't kill, he would be a CEO of a big company. Sure. You know, it's kind of that kind of sociopath, psychopath who's crossed the American that line. psycho. He's American psycho. Yeah. 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 He's Christian Bale yeah, right now. He's Christian Bale. But he looks like Andrew Garfield. Sure. See Please bonus see bonus episode. Bonus episode. <laughs> Other scenes that I liked as well was the Jada um, scene uh, when 
single hat do the running. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, you, you've done three. You need to do a fourth. And she's like, no, I've done four. She's like, no, you've done three. And then starts trying to cut her up. Yeah. I really appreciated that. See bonus episode, my thoughts. But summary, I got major Harley Quinn vibes from it. And I really liked it. Yeah. But you know what? Hmm. Jada called, called it. She she said that Signal was like man hungry. She was going after all the boys. And Signal's like, no, I'm not. Mm. Well, guess who was right? Yeah, but you actually literally are love triangle. You are love triangling. Yeah. He's right. I'll admit, I could have, I could live without romance. Yeah, you know, if there were, if there was more murder and less triangles, I would have been okay with that. Yeah. But it's a known fact I am not Neither of you are a big fan. You are not a fan of romance at right, all. Right, at all. And I'm not a fan of the love triangle. Right. When it comes to romance. I, I would have liked a lot more murder. <laughs> yeah. Can I give you my <laughs> alternate universe? Yes. Signal's a murderer. <laughs> yes. yes! So my alternate universe is Signal is a murderer, but she did not kill Rose. And she is pissed. So she wants to find out who killed Rose, her best friend, because she is not going to jail. She is not going to be found guilty and she is not going to be paying the price for a murder she did not commit. That is rude. Yeah. So then we have an actual serial killer. We have, or just a murderer. Well, we have an actual murderer trying to solve a murder that she didn't commit. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. So that's my alternate universe. Yeah. You know what I almost thought for a little while, a couple of times while I was reading it? You know, like Eric is really pushing Signal to figure out what happened. Figure out what happened in the shed. You can remember. Come on, do it. I was just thinking, was it him? Can it be Eric? Can Eric be the murderer? <laughs> I would have been all for that. For oh, sure. Oh, Eric was pushing her so much. She goes, was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Because he can see a killer. And actually, it was her. Oh, but yeah. she's manipulated her own memories to not remember. Yeah, that would have been good too. But you know what? It was that I can't remember the, the the score chart survey that found out who was classy, who designated them classy. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but it never actually talked to the people. It was just like a, a scraping of their internet history, their yeah. social media. Yeah. That the, it was d- data. So. Signal got classed as a class A because she was a goth. That yeah. that's kind of like the flaw in that algorithm. Yeah, yeah. Because she's a goth, she's a class A. Because you know, I know a lot of people who would fall into the class A category if it was based on you know the information Signal was providing about her music and TV watching and her internet history and and how her... many times they talk about murder on their podcast oh my god <laughs> whoops like I said the would you rather images alone would have me locked up yeah <laughs> but then we can go to camp together yay I'm not doing the obstacle course no way no how it's not happening <laughs> Can I tell you the one thing about the obstacle course that really just confused me, but also like I hated, like I, not not hated and didn't like. I would not like to do this bit. What climbing up the the like the apartment building thing? Yeah, just no, just scaling it. Yeah, scaling. That. Hate that. No, not happening. I'm 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 fairly strong, but I like I can throw a ball. I can hit a you know with a racket really strong but i don't have upper body strength when it comes to like being able to lift my own weight properly yeah it's which i found is a very different strength um so no i didn't like that not gonna happen that no, makes me tough. feel physically sick thinking about it like climbing ropes no, no. yeah like Ugh. can you just open the door and walk through it that's what i was gonna <laughs> ask you if they're being taught how not to get caught well, I'm sorry, but the one thing that's going to get you caught is when you're trying to spy the man a freaking building. Yeah. Because somebody's going to go, why is the man or the woman spider manning that freaking building? And I can hear all these 
sirens going off. The police are obviously hunting for somebody. That person's guilty of something. Yeah. Just Otherwise, walk, just you wouldn't be climbing a building. Yeah. Just walk you go the into the building and yeah. you suddenly hide. Yeah. You have an exit strategy. Yeah. You don't go murdering people without having an exit strategy. Right. Please see bonus episode for all Claire's plans for how she's going to murder and people yes. dispose of the evidence. Yes. So there's a lot of information there. For legal reasons, I will disclose that I have not murdered anybody, nor have any plans to murder anybody, and murder is wrong. Do not do it. Do not do it. Um, I feel like that was like a really good segue into Would You Rather, but I'm not it ready really for that is. yet, because I need to share my surprise. Oh, yes, we haven't done that bit, have we? No. Oh. Apart from the fact that, you know, at the end, especially at the end of the summary, and we were like, whoa, what, whoa, and then this, whoa, 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 we kept, like, twisting the knife over and over and over again. I think the biggest shock for me was Janine. Yeah. Janine, Rose's mom, killing her own daughter. There was no hint to that. And also... The Dave is Rose's dad. Yeah. They, they, those two revelations... It was good. ...was so out of the blue. Good stuff. I need to listen to it again to see if there's hints there. Yeah. I didn't get that the first time round. It's good stuff. Yeah. My biggest surprise was Signal's naivety. Mm. Like, she's desperately trying to find the good in people who are professed killers. Yeah. And not all, like, especially after Dog Mask Murder, they enjoyed it. They did. They yeah, she really still. Did. And she's like, oh, but we gotta start clean and let's not think about our past and let's paint stars on our faces and go to the cult. Oh, yes. No. We need a healthy dose of reality here, love. You're surrounded by murderers. Yeah. Surrounded. And even if you don't know Kate and Div's um, background as tinkers themselves, they're murderers. enablers. Yeah. Murderers. You need to... She needs to toughen up a little bit, I think. Yeah. She she was... Uh, soft and pliable and very very malleable which again makes me think what game is Eric playing yeah He's can't wait for book two can't wait for book two yeah I hope Eric gets worse like increasingly yeah. manipulative yeah to the point I, I wouldn't even mind if Eric was manipulative to the point where Sigler is his puppet yeah and then he's like, oh, well, you got to kill someone. And she's like, okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put stars on her face. Oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Yeah. yeah. I'd be into okay. that. I'd be into that. Okay. Now, now it's time for Would You Rather. <laughs> pew, 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 Would You Rather. Woo. Yay, woo. And today is... Even more special than it normally is, even though we're always excited about Would You Rather. But today is very special because Lily Sparks has joined us. We dragged Yay. her on and she was like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll come. And now she's here. Yay. Yay. <laughs> very excited thanks. to be here. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Um, so we're going to yes. dive in and give you the social media question first. And we've got some percentages to throw at you just to see if it'll influence your answer. And we've also got some comments from our listeners. Again, you may be able to just utilise their reasoning for yourself. We do that all the time. We do. It's not cheating. <laughs> so, <laughs> on social media, we asked, Oh no! You've got evidence to hide. <gasps> Would you rather bury it or burn it? Now, we already know because we've discussed this already and we've done the summary. The evidence is a body. Okay, but social can, media is a little sensitive <laughs> about talking about burying or burning dead bodies, so yeah. it's evidence. But the body's never the piece of evidence, you know? I mean, if there's ever evidence of your crime. 
resoundingly across the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok, everybody is burning their evidence. I have a feeling they may be burning paperwork. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that they know that they're burning corpses. No, but they, <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> And we do have some comments. We'll give them to you. And then they may influence your answer. Annie on Facebook said, uh, you can set on fire and watch it burn with a dramatic soundtrack. It's very good. <laughs> Brie on Facebook says, burn, baby, burn, disco inferno. She's singing us a song today. Then explode the ashes and walk away without looking at it. So she wants to do the yes. toss a match over the shoulder I, I get uh, it's Linda Hamilton who did uh, who who was in Terminator when she's Linda in, and she just see explosions walking away and she's just a badass yes. walking towards camera. <laughs> yes. I see that. I but Brie, obviously. I think that's accurate. Coral on Facebook said, I would bury it just so you know you can go back, just in case you need it, just to make sure you bury it when no one can find it. Feels a little dexter to me, but I'm fine with that. <laughs> Constance on Facebook says, I choose Barry only if it's evidence we need to clear our name. Need to protect and hide it until the time is right. If it's evidence of something bad I've done, then burn, baby, burn. (laughs) Colin on Facebook said, burn that bad lad. What better way to hide something than to destroy it utterly in the cleansing embrace of flames? Plus, (laughs) you can do a little dance around it as it burns. And if you do that when you've buried something, you just look like a nutter. (laughs) <laughs> uh, shelf addiction on instagram says burn buried evidence can always be found mm. that is true it can also always be found if you gently throw it in the lake right on the shore <laughs> and it'll just come right back just just <laughs> nudge it just just slightly just a little plop yeah so what are you doing? What are you doing, Lily? I think I'm going to go with Barry. Uh, I know I have a bit of an advantage here, but I do believe I want to work undercover at night. So flames are a dead giveaway. Oh, yeah. Smoke is also a giveaway during the day. And if we're talking about a body, you have to get up to some pretty extreme temperatures to destroy, uh, destroy bone, teeth, all those signifiers. Mm-hmm. So you're going to end up with half a barbecue plate to bury anyway <laughs> if you burn <laughs> so that so just true. start with the bearing go from there yeah i think i'm gonna bury also and like what is it that I, I feel like i saw a meme or something that said you know if you have to bury a body plant like some sort of endangered tree species or something on top oh, of it yeah and they Fair can't enough. dig it up so that's what i'm doing listeners <laughs> take this advice <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, You've Claire? got a huge patch of land near you, some woods anyway, so you've I got know. plenty of space. But you don't want to bury it there. I've thought about this a lot, and I know I shouldn't. I know they're supposed to be the spur of the moment. But to be fair, it's been on again and off again for several years now. Um, I, I'm going to go with bury as well, but I'm transporting that baby far away because the last thing you need is this is especially good i think in america i've watched a lot of documentaries if you cross state lines because they've got mm. a body mm-hmm. and how do they identify that body if we're talking body of course just body because we are we are 100 yeah, we are talking body especially in america if you cross state lines it's not the, f- the necessary access to a federal database that's going to help identify the body it's local, mm. and if that person has never been on the police radar in any way, shape, or form, it's going to make it even harder to identify who they are, and therefore harder to identify who the potential killer is. Also, don't kill people you know. It's obvious. <laughs> kill strangers? That's what Yes! It's good don't advice. kill anybody. PSA, do not kill anybody. It's <laughs> bad. It's probably it's the best advice. Hot take. The best don't super glue the boobs. Don't <laughs> kill people that you know there's a callback it's good it sounds really good <laughs> but yeah i'm I'm burying it but to be fair if it was documentation if it was paperwork it's biodegradable put it on the compost heap yeah, yeah shred it up some tea bags banana skins 
Yeah. Eggshells. Yeah. That's weird. No Worms. one will know. No, no one, one will know. No know. They never expect the, uh, like, the people composting things. You know, Commun- unless, like... Community garden, compost heat. Yeah. They would never, they would never know. Plus it's good for the environment. It is. Gotta think of the planet. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to our next question. <laughs> it's even better because the actual body is actually involved in this one. Excellent. Would you rather run the obstacle course at the Teen Killers Club camp or cut up and hide a body? Now, you can choose if this is a mannequin body or, you know, a corpse body. You, you can choose which one. Both have been provided for us in the text. So you choose which kind you're hiding. <laughs> you're pointing fingers of guilt again. <laughs> uh, is this is this is this directed to me? Are there social oh, media oh, responses? Uh, this is this? no. This is uh, we're we're just us now. Okay. Uh, that's why the question's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> I would go straight for the obstacle course. I uh, I went to several summer camps well i've never been to summer camp i've only worked at summer camps as a counselor so i've gone through obstacle courses not as intense as the one in the book but i i love a i love a ropes course (laughs) so i i would find that a joy and i have a very hard time just cutting up my chicken for tacos so bodies are not for me (laughs) real or fake it doesn't matter (laughs) Real or fake? Because I, you know, I used a mannequin hand prop when I tried to make a sizzle reel for Teen Killers Club, and I damn near took my own thumb off trying to <laughs> trying to cut it in half. At one point, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. See, that I don't would... think you're using the correct Japanese three hundred dollar knife there. You know? <laughs> but you know, if you had cut off your own thumb, that would have made for an excellent reel. <laughs> <laughs> Get the camera. You are such a method actor. That just yes. blows my mind. Record it. Blood spurting everywhere. I like that. This is cold. What are you doing, what are you Claire? Doing? Oh, uh-huh, no, I you asked you first. first. Dang it. Um, not the obstacle course. No way, shape, or form. <laughs> I, I am not fit for that. I'm not built for that. It's a terrible idea. I, I remember looking at ropes at the school gym and going, why would anybody try to climb that? That's stupid. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I felt so sorry for Signal and I related so hard to her like wanting to cry with the amount of pain and suffering she was going through on that obstacle course. I was like, yeah, same as same days, <laughs> and then having to made, be made to do it again. No, no. I, the fact that she could stand the next day, how? Like how? I I struggle after a brisk walk these days. Give me that body. I will cut it up and I will hide it. I will use the proper tools. A nice cleaver. Get through the bone. Get through the gristle. You know you've got to go for the joint. You don't go for the middle of the leg. You go for the joint. I'm Why do you have all this much. murder knowledge? I watch a lot of true crime <laughs> documentaries when I'm not feeling very well. And when I was at school, I saw every episode of Murder, She Wrote. So I think I have a very rounded education in murder. <laughs> I have not committed murder. The legal reasons I'm declaring this. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I don't know which one I want to do. Like, I don't want to climb. A, I don't want to free climb an apartment building because That's a bad I'm idea. So afraid of heights, I would just when I got to the top, I would just throw up and then pass out and fall off the edge. So I guess that would be a good reel for the advert for the for the. It book. would be. It would be. Let's make one. Um, I, I mean, I guess I'm going to cut up and hide a body, but I'm going to hide it better than Signal did all, (laughs) all 80 times she tried to hide it. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better than she did. To be fair, you could cut up the body and hide it in the bin and that would be a better job than what Signal did. (laughs) She really did a terrible job. My no favorite was planning. the first no one. And she's like, I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna go to the edge of the lake and toss it right in. Like, come on, man. 
You gotta try a little <laughs> bit harder than that. She did it not need to be lunch. there. You know what you you know what you see those videos of people who like throw the fish back in the water that have the accident and like <laughs> flopped out and they're just like so gentle going there you go there you go or they're helping those little baby birds fly by holding them and just going be free it's just the gentlest little be free moment <laughs> that's what, what she's doing did. with a fake body just... it's fake signal don't you don't need to worry about it it's not real oh you know the guy from the jinx like the uh the true crime documentary about that guy who like killed his wife and he went like a bit of a spree where he would dress up like a woman and then he would pack his victims into like trash in suitcases wrap them in trash bags walk them to the end of this like boating pier and just kind of throw them off yeah and like he was caught like very quickly after that because so like, you know he, he was a little bit of an inspiration where it was like just this kind of like weariness where she's like I'm going anyway. I'm, you know, I'm just marking C on all the multiple choice and getting out of here because it doesn't matter anymore. I'm, I'm gone. Like, whatever. It's <laughs> very C on multiple choice. To body hey, I will defend here. that methodology. I got an A plus on my geography multiple choice GCSEs. Thank you very much. Oh. I didn't know most of the answers. I will admit the the two that I didn't, I marked C. And I got an A star. That's top five percent of the country, baby. <laughs> Well, they say always go for the sea because always go for the sea. Map is on your side. <laughs> All right, what's our next question? Oh, I don't feel like we need one after that. <laughs> Which teen killer would you rather team up with? Dennis, Eric, Jada, Javier, Nobody, Signal, or the twins? There's oh. a lot of teen killers. I don't there is a answer. lot of teen killers. I don't want to answer this question. I do. Jada, because I like her style. I got Jada's Harley badass. Quinn. I got Harley Quinn vibes from her, and that rocked my boat. <laughs> she she was ready to turn people's faces into the Joker. Um, yeah, yeah, you're hardcore. <laughs> you're hardcore. You're gonna sit there. You're gonna play with a knife. You're gonna like pick t- spinach out with your knife with your teeth and your teeth, like a big machete thing as well, because she's she's bald. And you're going to be, like, giving people the wee crazy eyes. Love it. I love it. I mean, I kind of have a thing for nobody, so... Well, you like pretty girl killers. I do! (laughs) I'd have to pick nobody. Also, uh, she straight up murdered Dog Mask while everyone was, like, standing around. She was like, nope. Fuck you guys and just shivved him. So that was one of my favorite scenes. So I'm right? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gotta go with nobody. Can we team up with both of them? How cool would that be? That, yeah, that's okay too. And then we can go on a Gotham City Sirens like road trip because Gotham City Sirens is Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm into that. Trip. I'm into that. It's a good trip. So who are you picking? This is like the most important question I feel like for you. Oh well, it would have, have to be Dennis. Oh yeah, because Dennis. He does all the computer stuff, so he would be doing all the hard work. I would just be, you know, getting him takeout, going back and forth to Best Buy, being like, "Oh, you need a HDMI converter or something." <laughs> just like watching him type. <laughs> It'd be very yeah. chill. Yeah, I'd have to go with Dennis. I love how you've gone with the chill, and I'm like, psycho. <laughs> yeah, same. Same Z. <laughs> Beautiful psycho for me, though. <laughs> We're adventurous. What can we say? <laughs> All right. Would you rather kill a killer who's killed a lot or learn who's responsible for killing your best friend? Maybe the one I mean... you said. They yeah, could be the one truth. and the same. Ooh. Ooh. That's cheating, though. That's cheating. <laughs> option C. You, you, you've answered option C. <laughs> Always answer option C. Now that there is an option C, I'm just going to plump for it because uh, always choose option C. <laughs> I don't know. See, I mean, Usually, though, Amanda, we would scream there is no option C, but we created this monster. <laughs> we did. We really did. 
So I'm gonna allow it. I'm gonna let this slide. Look, I'm I'm gonna kill a killer who's killed a lot of people. I'm gonna go I'm gonna join the cult just for funsies <laughs> anyway. You just want the t shirt. I do. I want I want the gold like star paint all over my face. <laughs> And yeah, I I mean, I got like real midsummer vibes. And I want to be there. And I'm going to kill that guy. I can't believe she didn't stab him. Like, come on. <laughs> he's standing there and he's like, "Okay, stab me. You can do it. Just do it." And then she stabs him in the shoulder, like just this just this much farther over and it would have been done. But she doesn't want to be a killer and I get it and it's fine, but I want her to be a killer. Yeah, I wanted to be killed. Don't I'm simple. I wanted to be killed as well. I was like, no, yeah. no. He's standing there being all stabby. Kill him. Yeah. And he's a creep. Kill you him. can kill him. It's okay. He's giving you permission. <laughs> kill him. Just do it. Yeah. So I'm. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill Angel. Even though that's not necessarily the question that we asked, I'm just just telling everyone. <laughs> well, just it out in your target, your killer who was killed. Yeah. Very challenging. Very, yeah. very, very bloodthirsty. This question's gotten. Oh my goodness. I mean, to be fair, we've, this we're, is tame. Yeah, it is. We're, we're pretty bloodthirsty. <laughs> we've, cut up, we've cut up and hidden bodies already and burnt it's them. True. This yeah. is nothing. <laughs> yeah. I do you feel but like our serial killers light. are showing though? Being killed. Yeah, I'd have to go for the truth about the friend. I don't want you to die. But no, I would avenge you. Thanks. I would avenge you too. Thank you. Violently. Yes. In a vintage wedding dress. (gasps) It's so cinematic. I'm doing it. (laughs) I just want to still... With you, with the knife, all bloody, and the the gore coming down your hands as well, and just the 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 cut it, the the, the the splatter going across. I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have I... to go out and find a vintage wedding dress and take a cosplay picture for this week. Can I have Please. half an emotion where just one single tear goes down your cheek? <laughs> It'll be and, fake. And it smears the blood. <laughs> just because you're like, I finally avenged my best friend's murder. Yes. Now what do I do with my life? Yeah, what do I do now? Although I wish that she still had blue hair at that point, because I've got a really nice blue wig that, like, I wanted to put on for today, and then I thought, no, Amanda, don't do that. It's too much. But you are wearing a blue t-shirt, so the homage is there. It's true. Hmm. What was the blue wig for? Oh, I don't even remember why I bought it. I just, I have like 75 wigs. I do a oh, lot of costume stuff. Why did I get that one? Oh, oh it was you've had for, um, um, for Carew. Dream dream. Was... Yeah, for Carew yeah. from uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone is why I bought that one. I've got about seven wigs currently, and they're all in one cupboard. And there's a Rococo one, and there's a blonde bowl cut that is so good. Um, yeah, it's good to have them. You never know when you need them. I feel like you should be wearing that one right now. I feel like you need to take a take a break and go put on random wigs and then come back. I've got mine right down here. I've got well, I've got one right down here. I can reach for it and have it on in two seconds. (laughs) Oh my gosh! Okay, what's our last question? Oh goodness knows at this point. (laughs) Oh, I know this one. Would you rather choose Javier or Eric? Oh God, I love them both. See, I've got an option C, but I'm not allowed anymore. Is your option C nobody? Nobody or Jada. Okay. They were my favourite characters, so that's where my heart belongs. I was torn. I hated the love triangle because, like, just keep it as a triangle. Just keep both of them. Don't choose one. Choose both. How can you do that? They're killers. Why did you make me love all of the killers? What is this power you have over me? I knew that was going to happen, though. You love the assholes. I do. Which sounds really wrong. (laughs) You like people who are jerks. I do. They're the 
the best. What can I say? That's why we have a little uh, asshole t shirt now, Red Bubble Store. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to send we'll have to send you one. We like to send gifts to our authors who visit us for the first time. So we'll have to send you a lovable asshole t shirt. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's me to a T. <laughs> so who are you picking? Who do you pick? Javier or Eric? I simply cannot choose because I don't want to spoil the second and third books too much. Oh, and I feel like if I if I if I throw a name at you it'll become just just way too obvious. Uh, where the end game lies in book three, which is what I'm currently writing. So yeah. Oh, but the I, second book I is called... think that's an acceptable book. It's Teen fine. Killers in Love. <laughs> Teen Killers in Love. So it gets a fair amount more romantic in the second book. But also murdery. Don't worry. People get stabbed. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Plenty of, plenty of that. There are melted bodies too. Like, don't Good. worry. Okay. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm really upset that, you know, after Signal and Dennis did such a good job, you know, making their acid bath. Like, why didn't she, why didn't she make one for her fake rose corpse? Well, it it comes in handy later, but I don't okay. think it would have had the same effect on silicon because it is more of like an organic tissue mm, solution. Yeah. yeah, you're probably yeah, you're right. Yeah, I want to go to Google and find out what melts. The silicone. I can't. You answer haven't answered this. by the way, Amanda. I can't. I can't answer it. I cannot. I can't choose. Don't make me choose. <laughs> you just need vinegar to to soften silicon, which will help you melt it. Just vinegar. Oh. Alcohol and WD forty. Everything you have in the house. Well, good. Good to know. We've already got it. <laughs> okay, so I think I might have to pick Javier. Um. And, like, normally when I'm reading, I don't – I have trouble, like, fan casting people. But Javier, for me – and it's going to have to be, you know, grown up 17 years later, Javier. But it's it's Diego from Umbrella Academy. And I love him. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, I might have to pick Javier just just for that reason. But it's but it's grown up, you know, because I can't I can't choose the children to love a seventeen year old because that's gross. Amanda, stop it. Um, yeah, I, I fan casted Andrew Garfield as Eric. Oh, I could see Obviously, that. Obviously, older oh, as well. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. But um, we're talking as adults because otherwise right. creepy. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna go with Eric. Okay. I think Eric's sharper as well. But Javier's so sweet. Slash murdery. <laughs> I mean, you've got your sweet murdery, but then you've got your calculating. And I think I like the calculating just that little mm. bit more. Yeah. I think that's fine. You can have Eric, and I'll have Javier, and Lily will keep her damned secrets from us. Keep Unacceptable. Secrets. Unacceptable. <laughs> One day, somebody is going to tell us something that they really shouldn't have, and we're going to be like, oh! No. And then I'll be kind and edit it out, and then we'll just have to Listen keep to it the on the inside. Listen to little clip over again, yes. privately. Be like, he. Yes! <laughs> Tis the dream, okay. Amanda. Tis the dream. I know. One day. One day it'll happen. I'm trying to think of a random would you rather I can just suddenly throw at you since you copped out of the last one. <laughs> Can't. Yeah, I think Great. we should just move on. I think we should move yeah. on to our other questions. That's Great. the end. It's the end of Would You Rather. So we gotta we gotta move on to other things. So fun. Please yes. check out the bonus episode for the rest of the conversation with Lily Sparks. Yes. It's very important. Yes. And then when you've read it and you uh, listen to it and then read Teen Killers Club. Tell her we said hello. Yeah, do. Please do. Favorite final thought quote? I'll give you one. Okay. It's fine. Got stars on my face. No. Stars on my face. Stars on my face. Oh, the 
This is so beautiful. Oh, I don't know why every time I do that, which everyone should go and watch the bonus. I mean, everyone should join our Patreon and watch the video. My hair gets really involved. That's because you just like, yeah, oh, oh. I need stars. I need glitter. Yeah. I need a wedding dress. I need a knife. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I keep keep ruining everything. Twist. <laughs> Where'd you get your girl information? A T-shirt from 2002. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, I forgot all about it too. Um, you know they're <laughs> they're at this camp and they they don't have any belongings because you know they're in prison, but. All the clothes that they have to wear is like lost and found stuff, and I just I really liked that because honestly, they probably were t shirts from 2002. She's wearing a sweatshirt that says Yo Quiero Taco Bell at one point, <laughs> and like, like my fashion. And when she first meets Jada, Jada's shirt says like actually a mermaid or secretly a mermaid or something like that. Like, where I need that. Jada is a fashion icon, and I will not have a bad word yes. said about her. Yes, yes. So I'm glad that you picked that quote to remind me to talk about that, because that was, <laughs> was good. Um, I've got one like serious one, and then one that just made me laugh out loud while I was listening to the book. Shut up your butt! <laughs> I really enjoyed that when they're all in the cabin together and you know the boys and the girls are mixed up together and then there's some flatulence and the, the response is shut up your butt it's good <laughs> do you feel like I need to shout that preferably at my brother yeah next time shut up your butt probably did shout at that when we were teenagers to be fair yeah so then i have a serious one because there's also some serious things that happen in this book i'm not useless just because i don't want to kill people it's true even though it's very true everyone around you is a killer i mean to be fair that should apply for the vast majority <laughs> of the population of yeah. the planet yeah <laughs> All right. If you liked this, try this. Got anything? Yeah, and I feel like I'm somewhat cheating, but I don't care. Oh, I'm also cheating with mine, too. Are we cheating in the same way? I don't know. I'm How... hoping so. That would be ridiculous. How are you cheating? <laughs> I'm going to recommend next week's book. <laughs> that's not how I cheated, but that's perfect. <laughs> um, Because, hashtag not very tenuous link, it's based around a camp. <laughs> and terrible things happen at this camp. Yes. And the camp is run by terrible people. Yes. Now, I'm not going to give you the full summary from Goodreads because you have to listen to our episode next week where yeah. we will go into yeah. just terrible, ridiculous, and spoilery amounts of spoilerness. And I can yes. tell you now, it's a long one, so buckle in. Kids. Oh, but it's so good. Oh, such a good book. And it also it's... fits in with our theme Zombie Apocalypse. Zombie Apocalypse. So, yeah, I'm only going to give you a couple of snippets from the Goodreads summary just to give you a bit of flavour. And the book is Eat Your Heart Out by Kelly DeVos. Zombie. Vivian Ellenshaw is fat, but she knows she doesn't need to lose weight, so she's none too happy to find herself forced into a weight loss camp's van with her ex-best friend Ali, a meathead jock who can barely drive, and the camp owner's snobby son. And when they arrive at Camp Featherlight at the start of the worst blizzard in the history of Flagstaff, Arizona, it's clear that something isn't right. V barely has a chance to meet the other members of her pod, all who seem as unhappy to be at Featherlight as she does, when a camper goes missing down by the lake. Then she spots something horrifying outside the, in the snow. Something that isn't human. Plus, the camp's supposed miracle cure for obesity just seems fishy. 
And V and her fellow campers know they don't need to be cured of anything. <coughs> Spoiler alert, I freaking love this book. And I'm very much looking forward to our discussion next week. Same Z's. It's based around a camp, like I say, ran by terrible people. Horrific things happen. I could not not recommend yeah. it. Yeah. It's very good. Come back next what, week What for is more. yours? What are you, are you, did you see your cheating as well? Yes, because I'm just suggesting the second book in the Teen Killers class. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called Teen Killers in Love, and it's out next month. It's out in August. Freaking and the summary from Goodreads. Freaking love this. Right? I know, we're cheating so bad. The Teen Killers Club is on the brink of destruction, with one faction pitted against another in a deadly game of survival. Eric and Signal are part of the group who've had their kill switches disabled, and the others are under orders to hunt them down or meet their own demise. Now Eric and Signal have to find a way to neutralize the other's switches and clear Signal's name. In the middle of a manhunt that is going viral and turning them into an internet age, Bonnie and Clyde. Yes, please. (laughs) Eric and Signal are both class A's, the most dangerous and manipulative criminal profile. But Eric is the ultimate class A, with ten kills to his name and a secret in his past that will change everything. As if being hunted down wasn't enough, Eric is determined to get Signal to admit that she loves him. But Signal is hell-bent on crushing her own growing attraction. It's a race against time to save the Teen Killers Club from its worst nightmare. Having to kill the friends they need more than ever. Ooh, need it! People who kill together stay together. (gasps) Need it! Love it. Do we have an indie spotlight this week? We do have an indie spotlight. It is not at all related to anything, but we just got this one just a couple of days ago, and I love it. I get so excited because I always wonder, like, which one am I going to share each week on the show? Which one? What am I going to pick? And then I purposely always... don't look as well. Like, I, I get know. to a certain point, and I just don't look because I like to. I, like I know, to I know. Surprise. So this one. We just got, it's called Blowing My Mind Like a Summer Breeze by Benjamin Roche. Mm. 15-year-old Rainy Cobb never thought meeting someone could actually change her life. But then again, she's never met anyone like Juliet. It's 1995, and the Cobb family band, led by Rainy's rock star parents, has arrived for a week-long gig at the Midwestern Resort owned by Juliet's family. Dazzled by Juliet's carpe diem attitude, DIY tattoos, and a passion for grunge, Rainy falls hard. And when Juliet gives Rainy a mixtape that unlocks her heart's secret yearnings, Rainy starts seeing herself and her vagabond showbiz life through new eyes. If Rainy quits the band, her parents' fading career might never recover. But if she doesn't leap now, she might be stuck forever in a life she didn't choose. And always wonder who she could have been. Ooh. Hmm. You know what? There was a hashtag tenuous link in there. Homemade tattoos. <laughs> Super tenuous. Ultra tenuous link. So, that's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Eat Your Heart Out by Kelly DeVos. It's our book club theme. Yay, zombies. Zombie apocalypse. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com, follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover, 
find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictional hangover and on Twitter at fictional hangover no ER. If you'd like this episode, check out our others and rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening. <laughs>